are such an asshole. Hello, children. So today, at least this hour, I have internet access because reasons. And if we blank out, it's because the internet sucks and the gods hate me. Anyway, uh, we have an original. If you have, we do requests at Asshole Consulting, where if you have a question, obviously I'll help you out about your particular life. But then some people say, I don't want to hear about other people's life. I want to hear what Cappy has to say. So we have another original. AssholeConsulting.com, you know the thing. Um, <clears throat> So I, I did want to do this because I want to, one, have a track record for posterity to say, look, we try to help out these girls. We did. And it, it and I know help in the United States and the West means tell women whatever they want to hear, no matter how bad it is for them. For example, hey, you really ought to lose some weight because health and reasons you won't fall in love and good sex life. Because it's more important women feel good about being fat than living long, healthy lives. <clears throat> so that's bad. But if you tell them, you go, girl, Lizzo, hot, y'all, and whatever. Oh, yay, I give you money on my vote. Oh, my God, my life's in shambles. But you told me the thing I want to hear. So I hope historians find the server that this you know video sits upon. And they say, yeah, look at this guy. He tried to help him, but they didn't want to listen because they'd rather be fat. And so there was this gal who went viral on the TikTok. And I think it's actually legit. I think it's sincere. Most of the TikTok girls that are crying are doing it for attention. They're doing it to get clicks and likes and, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And then people donate them money. But this one I thought was real because I I don't know, it just looked real. She was crying because I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> and then uh, sub uh, subsequent videos, people have put some compilations of girls like, I don't want to be independent. <clears throat> And to which I respond, and the point of this video is, well, too bad. We are now on our third generation. We're not not these individual ladies. And I apologize. Well, I don't apologize for me, but <clears throat> I feel sorry for you girls who wanted a traditional lifestyle. But because we live in a democracy, uh, a disproportionately high percentage, a disproportionate majority of women, along with some men, have decided to vote in an economic system where everyone now has to work. Now, also because of that system, you don't really have to work because there's a bunch of welfare and government aid and stimmy checks. And, oh, my God, do you have a do you have social anxiety disorder? Oh, you can't possibly work. Here's a check. <clears throat> but if you're, I don't know, normal, healthy, ethical, and you want to go work or you got to support yourself, or what is very commonly the case, the government money doesn't, provide you the standard of living that you'd like uh, and you happen to be in the situation where, where you usually have to do some kind of combination of work and collect welfare even and that, that's like the best like support you're going to get even that is not going to provide most of you ladies the standards of living you would like and even the concept whether or not you're collected in government check or not let's remove that from the table the idea of a full-time job may be traumatized like legitimately traumatizing for those of you who grew up in the prestigious little suburbs or the trailer park or the ghetto where government money flowed free and you never had to work. All of a sudden, now you're 18, 19, 20. You got to work because the money ain't coming in. <clears throat> the point is you got to get a job. And some gals now, they're like, well, I don't want to do that. And it's like too bad. Because as I said before, three, probably four generations, depending on the age of the youngest generation, we voted for a quasi, it's called a mixed market economy or quasi socialist, quasi capitalist. Right. And what, I, what I'm saying there is there are, we have decided as a, as a community, as a nation, as a group of voters, particularly women, though, if you look at men, we, we vote generally as a group against this. Obviously, there's some not real men that vote for other people's money, <clears throat> but you girls generally voted. For this socialist aspect of this system, which means the taxes are raised. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but you just got to have to trust me as an economist. If you do look up the data, you will find out that the average rate, the average amount of tax, the average person pays, even those of you on welfare, though it's a little bit lower, or for some kind of government, if you're in the lower, it's a little bit lower, but on average, the average person pays a tax rate of about 36 to 38%. I have to update my numbers. 
more than one in three dollars is taken out of your pocket to go pay for all this Marxist, touchy-feely, feminist, socialist bullshit you wanted with free this and free that. And oh my God, Obama, it costs money. It's not free. It's not free. <clears throat> and if you want a man to support you, you want it. You want that traditional life. You're sick and tired of working. All right, and the government is only going to pay this much, and you're barely getting by. So now you want a man to support you in a traditional fashion. That economy is long ago. That economy doesn't exist anymore. These guys have to pay at minimum. At minimum. Well, I can't say at minimum. <clears throat> On average, your average Joe Blow. Who you're not even interested in, and you're certainly not interested in the welfare collecting Joe Blow who has a touch of the autism. Oh my God, I need a government aid. He lives at home and plays it. Remember the Democrat boys you you voted in, you dreamed of? Well, there they are. But you want someone else to take care of you now. You want you want to be June Cleaver all of a sudden. Dude, that that playground, that stage, that ball field was demolished long ago. And we have a new ball field where that game can't even be played. Because right now, the average guy, the average Joe that you won't even piss on, <clears throat> plumber Joe, 36% tax rate. That doesn't include the inflation. I don't want to bore you with the philosophical thing, but we all keep voting for more free money. Well, that causes inflation, which is technically a tax. I'm not going to bore you with that, but it certainly lowers your purchasing power. See, your tax rate is more. The average person, the tax rate is definitely above 40%. Four in 10 of your dollars goes to the government and to pay for inflationary costs. And then the only guys that could support a woman today, you are you definitely got to be making $100,000. And you cannot be living in these little metro, metro, um, metropolitan areas. You cross, oh my God, it's where all the action is in the culture. Now you're talking 200 grand. Well, what did you vote for? What did you and the previous three or two generations of women voted for? You voted for progressive income tax rates. Now, the guy who makes 100000 let's just take a guy who makes 100000 Quite impressive. Let's say a guy in his 30s, younger 30s, majoring in engineering, worked hard, made it to like junior management or senior engineer. He's bringing $100,000 in a not overly priced town where it still counts for something like, I don't know, like basically not a leftist shithole you girls keep voting for. Not Seattle, not San Francisco, not New York, not L.A., um, Dallas, okay? Dallas, Texas. 100000 will go some places there. Maybe not downtown, but it'll go some places. He's paying by the end of the day. Well, Texas has no state income taxes, so, uh, but... Let's see, Missouri. Okay, St. Louis, Missouri, there, a normal town. <laughs> By the end of the day, you damn well near taking fifty thousand dollars out of the guy's hundred thousand. Right? And there's tax benefits, you know, like you get your tax deductions on your 401ks, IRAs, which you should be. But but my whole point is <clears throat> let's say you took 40% of his money away when it's all sent down. He's got sixty thousand dollars. Even these guys can't afford to raise you. Even these guys can't afford to pay for it. That's gone. I mean, you girls, the ship was in the dock. And I'd like to say the ship sailed and you missed the boat. No, no, no. You girls literally burned it to the, the well, not the ground. You burned it and sank it in the water. You threw Molotov cocktails at it. You drilled holes in it. You shot it with bazookas. It, and when there was this pyre of fire slowly sinking into the water below, you danced with your loincloths and your spears because you got back at the evil, greedy patriarchy or capitalists or I don't know what we call them as people who work hard and make good money. And now you're like, oh, my God, the boat. and We can't sail on the boat. Oh, the boat's gone. Don't you remember the past, Scott? Well, depending on your age, 30 years ago. For the for the boomer women, it's like, I don't know, I'm on a fixed income. Well, maybe you shouldn't have treated your men like shit. <laughs> maybe, 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 I don't know, maybe you should have worked more and saved some money. What? <laughs> you, so there always is, <clears throat> you go high up enough on the income scale. There is, there are men who make 200,000 a quarter million or all the way up to billionaires who can provide and support that family that you want. And, or maybe you don't want a family. Maybe you just want to be taken care of. 
and now you want to be the troll and all these all these grifter girls like i'm a trad wife oh my god t look at my cleavage i made brownies it turned out she was a porn actress in the past <clears throat> but for those of you like i don't like it i don't you don't like this ride anymore you don't have the option to get off you're stuck you are stuck and just as it took three generations of 50 years to get to this style of economy, it's going to take just as long to get out of it, which there is not the voting wherewithal to go back to a 1950s free market, the lower taxation, pre-welfare state. It's over. It's over. Your parents had sex. They didn't abort you. You're alive and conscious now, and you will get to work and toil unless you are one of the few exceptionally lucky girls or hardworking girls that managed to snag one of these very now ultra wealthy men who post tax still have the money left over to afford to take care of you, let alone any other children you want. But I, you know, and I'd have to run the numbers and look at cost of living and how many kids and all, but just a ballpark estimate. We're talking less than one in 10 men, less than one in 10. And by the way, it's not like, it's just so you know, for the ladies who would like to be traditionalists and you would like to be at home and put on the, the French maid outfit and make cookies. For those of you who are thinking like, well, I'll get a, <clears throat> I'll get the traditional guy. I'll, I'll do it by just, you know, dressing up nice and being the June Cleaver. No. All the women are competing for those guys, including the gals who don't care to get married. And these guys, you know, especially if they're good looking, they got all the choice in the world. And they're like, well, there's this really kind of hot gal who's like 23 and doesn't want to have kids. And I'm kind of in the middle. And I'm, I saw my old man, my grandpa, my buddies get divorced. I'm not going to get me this. Look, by the way, that 10 percent ballpark estimate, it's even lower than that. That's just the percentage of men that have the finances to take care of a family. Let alone you. It doesn't say anything about what percentage of that 10% actually want to do that. You do remember the baby boomer women and the Gen X women and the current millennial. You do remember the divorce Olympics of the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. You do remember that the United States took gold all those decades in that field. You do remember that. Well, so do the men who were the children or even grandchildren of divorce. <clears throat> and let's also not forget about. I don't want to call it propaganda um, because because it really I mean, yeah, there's aspects of it is. But the what you, what you've been telling men, you, the communal, you, the universal, you, as I mean, women in general in the United States and the West in general, but not maybe individually you. What message have you sent these young men now who are in their 30s, 40s, these up and coming guys who are starting to make this kind of money? What have you told me? Heaven forbid. What have, what have you told the average 20 something male? In the United States today, about how much? <laughs> Think about this. How much have you told them you love them and support them and really appreciate men and God, men are great and they're really oh, you can't wait to find a guy and oh, you just you just love set men. How where where was that? Where were those? I didn't I didn't get that memo. Did any of you guys get a memo? Guys in the chat room. One, if you got that memo about how much women like you and how supportive and just great you are for society, zero if you got the complete opposite. So now you have this uh, demoralization. You, you have not encouraged men at all. <laughs> you have done the opposite of being kind, sweet, supporting, um, <clears throat> championing, or just liking guys. Maybe in private closed doors, you might like guys, but the public face, uh, the universal organization, the, the you, American women, Western women have present the, the official stance you have presented to men is that they are not want. They're not definitely not needed, generally not wanted. Some of you hate them and they're the cause of all your problems. I don't know. I, I I'm not going to go see the Barbie movie, but. I guess the reviews, I mean, that, that looks like that. Look, look at Barbie for, for better or worse, maybe go see it. And then you look at that and you see what, what kind of message did we, did we just tell men last week? <laughs> what did we tell men last week? <clears throat> so now you got this ballpark 10% who can support a wife. 
what percentage of them want to? What percentage of like, hell no. You know, the meme, the guy with the, 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 the crown, he's just holding his money like that. What percentage of men are like that? They got the money. And this is another thing. I know, you know it's anecdotal, but in having clients, I'm, I'm of the age where the guys my age are we're in our prime income earning years, some of which have obviously been divorced. These guys are not getting married. They're not even flashing their money. You wouldn't know it if the guy has money. Now, especially if the guy's a little bit older and wiser and actually has money. Not the dipshit 27-year-old that leases a Lambo and doesn't have the money. I'm talking like real wealth. The guys who actually could support you, you wouldn't be able to identify them. I knew that in banking a long time ago. The people that walked in with the Beamers and the Mercedes, the things that, you know, the shiny objects you girls uh, misassociate with wealth, you 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 confuse that you think he has money. It's like, no, he doesn't have money. He has a car. He used to have money until he bought that car. Now he just has a car. He ain't got no money. <clears throat> but you, you're not, let's be honest. Are you going to go out with Mortimer Snurd, senior software engineer over at Doodly Doo Incorporated? Are you going to go out with Bob Bobson, senior master plumber who makes 120000 but, oh, he plays with, oh, he's not a shiny, cute investment banker. Are, are you, there's, <clears throat> there are some men out there. Let's go back to that 10% of men. There's 10% that can Five, I'm going right down the middle. Five, five are not going to. And that's generous saying five will. So 5% of men have the money and are willing to do so. But, are, but within that 5% of men that have the money and are willing to do so are boring yet highly compensated men. Typically tradesmen, engineer types. You know, within that, what what the status, do you want status or do you want love? Which one do you want? The percentage of them that are executives and doctors or surgeons, or race car drivers, whatever it is that you, you the status you want, <clears throat> less than 1%. Because the fact is, wealthy men, men who make wealth and women who make wealth, they're, not, they're usually not sexy, exciting careers. They're hard, they're laborious, they're math intensive, or they're highly skilled. And it's wiring houses, industrial, and they're working in the oil fields. Although we, we shut the, remember, ladies, good thing you shut those oil fields down. Good thing, because fossil fuels are bad. We wouldn't want to have a bunch of millionaire blue collar guys with houses and money. We wouldn't want to have those guys supporting you in a fail. That'd be bad. Thank God you got rid of that. Um, it, so it, in the end, when you do the calculus and do the math, there's not enough of these guys to go around. Nowhere near enough, even to support this, which I forecast, which I estimate to be a minority of women. A minority of you girls want to be stay-at-home wives. I understand that. Most women <clears throat> want to go out and work as long as it's not math or hard. You know, oh, I'm a teacher. Oh, I'm a social worker. Oh, my God, I'm a journalist. Oh, my God, I'm a whatever, whatever work avoiding fields. All right. But there are some women who are legit accounting, doctors, engineer, whatever, right? So we know, <clears throat> but most want to go work. But even what I estimate, one in five of you secretly, oh, you're a strong, independent woman, but you won't tell the feminist hierarchy or the hive mind, like, no, I do want to be a stay at home wife. <laughs> what is it? You know, I, uh, I, I, I Kind of do want to, I'm even including the sheepish, quiet ones who don't have the bravery, courage, or independence to declare to the public that no, I want to, I want to make stay at home and be a mom and make the cookies. <clears throat> one in five. I'm gonna say one in five, twenty percent of you. I'd say one percent of the men out there, you're you are are capable and willing to do it, and that you co co currently would settle for the public shame that would come with being married to a plumber or an engineer or a boring accountant and how dare you be the stay-at-home wife how dare you betray the sisterhood so we're we're talking a one percent which means out of the 20 percent of you girls who secretly or publicly want to be a stay-at-home you want the traditional thing that one percent of guys covered 20 percent of girls 95% of you, 95% of you who want the traditional life, you are not 
going to get it. You are not. And you will work until you're dead. And I say that as an economist and if I did financial planning classes, I, I know this. I know this. You most most ever well, most everyone has to work till they're dead <clears throat> because everyone has very bad financial planning, guys and gals. But for those of you who are like, well, I really want a guy. No, it's not an option. You gotta stop dreaming about it and just stop thinking and stop torturing yourself over that prospect. The prospect is not there. You will work until you're dead. You will toil until you die. I recall there being a story about that where they had heaven on earth, and then someone screwed up, and then some some being said, you will work until you're dead. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder where that came from, and I'm not even a big believer in that story or that book. <laughs> Just saying there might be some wisdom in the past. But deadly serious right now, all my mathematical powers of a finance, I, you will work until you're dead. You can retire earlier. You don't have to work until you're dead. It will require that you work a real job that pays a real salary, not sit there and bitch and whine and moan, bit demanding student loan bailouts. And why don't I make as much money as a journal? Well, why don't you learn to code? What? Why do you hate women? Oh, my God. I'm trying to make you money, dude. You have to throw money into an IRA. You have to throw money into a 401k. Here's one. Sit down, everybody. Boys included with your fancy cars you buy to impress the girls. You gotta spend less than you make. I even have a course on minimalism that, that basically gets you unaddicted to spending, but you gotta spend less than you make. And then you will be able to retire if you play your cards right, you major in the right thing, you know, buy shoes that are $10,000. You should be able to retire at about 50, but you're not having any kids. All right, that's for sure. You're not gonna go and party every day. You're not living in New York on credit cards as you work some part-time job and not saving. You're gonna have to work hard Every day for decades, <clears throat> saving your money, foregoing the party scene or whatever, you know, Jimmy Choo shoes or whatever, hand bay, whatever it is, whatever it is that gives unloved women purpose and meaning in life and value in life. That's what you are. You're unloved because ain't nobody loving you but yourself. All right. You have to cut all that out <clears throat> and then you have to go for freedom. You can retire early. But if you want to, you know, YOLO, YOLO. YOLO. Have you heard of that? YOLO. Or you don't want to work. You're going to live on life support financially, meaning go live off welfare or whatever, EBT. <clears throat> you will exist and toil for the rest of your life and you will work until you are dead. Or you can no longer work like you know, you're injured or you have a stroke. And I don't want to think about the last several years of your life like that. Because you'll be at the mercy of charity and everyone else. You will be effectively a white-collar panhandler. You, you, you'll be in a government nursing home. That's what you voted for. So you, you're here. The paradox or the irony, you're alive. Your parents had you. Shucks, howdy. That... Boomer mom of yours just didn't abort you. She should have just been more feministy. <clears throat> you're here. You're alive. You're conscious. If you look at nearly all my books or courses and everything, I'm about capitalizing on life, whether there is love or not in it. Right? And But for this particular case, for you girls that would like to have a, a traditional life, I'm saying that is not on the menu anymore. You, that will not be part of your life. And so you need to abandon all hope on that, get much more practical, align your expectations with reality, and start making plans and taking actions that is based in reality to salvage and make the most of your life while you are consciously here. And while it might feel good to cry on the internet, hope you got it out. Hope all you other gals got it out. That's nice. But again, I don't know if you remember. See, you see that pyre? See those ashes in the water of that boat you just burnt down? Yeah, that was the boat. That, yeah, that, that, no, you're not sailing on that boat. So now you got to figure out something else to do. <clears throat> and that's it. I'm just trying to, I'm helping you out. I know this may be the first time for many of you girls, someone just told you the truth. 
yeah, I, you could call me all the names. I don't care. We're, I, I got here's a memo from the communal us guys to the communal you ladies. We don't give a damn anymore. Shut up. <laughs> we don't care. Oh, no, you're going to call us the ists and the isms. And, oh, the woman hate us. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. We've been making our own boats. We've, we've, we, in the meantime, we've not only been making our own boats. We got like parasailing going on. We got motorboats and speedboats. We're doing our own thing. We abandoned that boat long because, and I'll go through the zeros and the ones here again. We'll see if we got the message. You, you said you didn't want that boat. All right, well, we'll go on the boat. <clears throat> so there you go. Now, link below, I have a lot of resources because men have been in this situation for quite some time. Concurrently, if men are in the situation, also you girls are in this situation, just maybe you might be aware of it. Maybe these, these resources might be of benefit to you. But a couple things link below. One, my book, Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. You cannot afford to be majoring in dumb things, especially when it comes with a $150,000 price tag. All right. So I, I would like to see you girls close the wage gap. That starts by majoring in the right thing and not majoring in touchy, fluffy, bunny music therapy degrees. The second book link below is called Bachelor Pad Economics. Well, I'm not a bachelor. You're right. But the finances and the things are all the same. There's a little bit of difference because women live longer than men. So you got to kind of bump up your retirement savings plan. But you like, how do I <clears throat> how do I support myself and pay for retirement? There you go. I thought it was just vote Democrat. You can do that too. And look how happy all the Democrat women are living off of welfare. They're a really happy group, aren't they? They're really successful. By God, they're capitalizing, making their lives count. <laughs> uh, there is my, my initial uh, introductory course. It's not even about financial planning. It's to give you the wherewithal to get off your ass and actually take the first step. And the, reasoning so you have the incentive and motive to fully complete and do financial planning setting up your ira account 401k account all those other things it's called achieving financial excellence it teaches you what the real value or what real wealth is also how wealth is going to change over time as i forecast it might i could be wrong but even if you were if i'm wrong you're still going to be in better position it's a two-hour course it's offered through teachable in case you can't find just search Achieving financial excellence. Boys, that's for you too, for you to stop pissing away your money on cars. And then there's a book called The Menu. I wrote this because they're forecasting half of women, consequently half of men, half of all of you ain't going to be married by 2030. Ever. Ever. <clears throat> and so normally in times past, what gave men and women purpose and reason life would be kids and each other. We burned that ship down long ago, and now you got to figure out another reason to live. And in the menu, it's a menu of everything life has to offer outside the opposite sex and family. There are separate menus for men and women because sit down, everybody. Everyone got their sitting down chair? I don't want you to fall and injure your head because this is, this is going to floor some of you. Men and women are different, and men and women have different incentives and programming. And so I've come up with a menu of things that will give men a reason to live and a menu for women that will give women a reason to live and enjoy and, and, and capitalize on life. <clears throat> there are shareables and appetizers. There's a dessert menu as well that both men and women can enjoy. But the main menu, after you go through the, the intro and the conclusion, the main books are men's menu, women's menu. You could read the men's menu if we want, but I don't think you're going to like it. I don't think your tastes are the same as men. And men, you have. A lot of guys have bought this book. Obviously, my audience is mostly male. A lot of guys have read the females like, oh, that's horrible. Why would I'm like, no, you wouldn't, but they will. Women don't like the same things as men. All right. So there's the women's menu, and that will give you purpose and meaning and joy in life outside, you know, men, which again is going to happen for most of you, at least half they forecast. And I think that's about it. Now, let us go to the Super Chats and have ourselves a treat. <clears throat> let's uh, Actually, let's go to the chat room and see if we got ones or zeros. <laughs> let's see how many. Oh, wow. A lot of very active chat room here going on. What's up, everybody? <laughs> zeros. <laughs> zeros all day long. Oh, wait, one. Uh, and Tody, did, you, did they say something nice to you about men? I, I've never heard it. I'm, I'm very happy for you. Zero, 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 one. Rev, he says one. 
zero zero left at minus of Aztec. You got for hey won the Aztec Patriarchs. And where have you been, man? Uh yeah. One, but after 18 zero. <laughs> Do you notice there's no push? Like, hey, that's unfair, Aaron. Many girls were saying nice things. <laughs> I've had individual women like, I really like you, but it was a romantic relationship. But otherwise, in public, oh, I've oppressed you all this time? Oh, <laughs> I've never sat in a position of power in my life. I've been a security guard all this time. Somehow, I'm oppressing women. <clears throat> all right. Uh, well, here's what's funny, guy. You okay? One, the vast majority of people consuming this uh video is going to be men. What few women are going to watch? They're not gonna. <laughs> okay, have have fun trying to get on that sunken ship. I I don't care. All right, let's go to the super chats real quickly here. My truth, laughing all out your thumbnail skills. Impressed we are. I I learned that thumbnails are very important. Forget the, the cover of the book matters. It really does. It really does. Factious T. Lou, five bucks. How old do you think the average Gen Alpha person to get the driver's license? I'm about 32 years old. You know, in my book, How Not to Become a Millennial, which would also be another good book to read. It's lengthy, though. Um, was it 18% of Zoomers didn't have it, but it was by the age of 20? The numbers are kind of hard to come by, but it's a shockingly high. But 32 is a little bit too old. And alpha, I don't even think, I don't even think they're even of driving age yet. They're the they're the kids, right? They're the kids, so I don't think they're. Uh... We'll find out when we get there. Warehouse by Breck, five generous dollars. Yes, not to say Osama Abdu. Hey Osama, you see, I did a video on Marty. Uh, just a, I missed your last dollar super chat. AC, have you ever seen the 1995 movie called Marty? No, I did a whole video on it. Look on the go through the archives. It's a couple back. I I did talk about it. Michael Manker, 10 bucks. When they say 250000 to raise a child in the USA, are they factoring a mortgage to that houses said kid? Because if not, holy F. I, I'll tell you this right now. There's plenty of resources I could give you. Go pick up poor Richard's retirement. You don't need, kids don't cost $250,000. That's on average. It also assumes you're paying for some education. Um, <clears throat> I would say the average kid, if you wanted to, you could easily get by on 100000 over the course of their life. The, and then the more kids you have in the same house, obviously the per unit cost goes down because some of the overhead fixed costs are being amortized, spread over multiple children. But 250000 that's like, if you're like, oh my gosh, Trisha, my kid has to have the coolest shoes ever. Like, that's that. Um, that's, um, it, it's not cheap, but it, I would say that's a little on the high side. Well, and here's another thing with that. Let's go back to that for that two, Mike, for that two hundred fifty thousand. How much you want to bet that factors in daycare costs? Because women don't want to raise the kids. I'm serious, you know, like what if you stayed home and raised the kid like these traditional women would like? I guarantee you the numbers go down. And by the way, if you go get that poor Richard's retirement, you could see how you could get by on a on a house. Well, <clears throat> several years ago it was fifty thousand dollars. Nowadays, with the inflation, it's probably closer to. 75, 80, maybe even 90. But you're like darning your socks and there's one car and, you know, I, I don't mean to go into the boring life of work that people would have to be doing, both the man and the woman. Lar, 57, five bucks. A woman can help you become a millionaire. The trick is that you must be a billionaire beforehand. I I get a kick like, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't see the, the big ball of light. Like we see the sun, right, guys? You say, hey, look at that big ball of light in the sky. That's the sun. Oh, man, it sure is bright. It's so bright you can't even look at it, right? And, and equivalently bright, like, like a more appropriately associated with a mushroom cloud of a nuclear explosion. We see that. That's called divorce. We see it. You see it. We see it from all around. You got to wear a face mask to protect yourself from it. And the girl's like, what divorce? Why, why, why are guys getting married? Why aren't they stepping up? <laughs> Do you not see the giant thermonuclear mushroom cloud in the sky? And girls like, come on, let's go vacation over there. Like, how about we don't? How about we go the opposite direction? 
Nonstop trade two bucks. Do you think government will draft women? Equal- no, they never will. They never will. Because when push comes to shove the genetic, they're just not going to do it. I mean, if there was an, like at the last moment, like, you know, World War II, the Germans were drafting 14 year old kids. <clears throat> I don't even think these drafted women back then, did they? Right when the when the Allies were knocking at the Siegfried line, it's called history, kids. Michael Manker, uh, two bucks, two fifty. I mean, yeah, yeah, I figured. Chris is not here. A tornado chasing agent in the field for a buck. Strange Zosity, two bucks. Cash app normalized women being shameless beggars. Yeah. Oh, this is the analog. I'll tell you a story about the analog days. Hang on, let me check. I got lots of things going on. <clears throat> I want to make sure my IT guy doesn't come here and turn off the internet while I'm on fire. Uh, good, he hasn't texted back yet. We got some time. And Cappy gets to go to the dump. Oh, boy, huh? Fun, boys and girls. The dump. Mm. <clears throat> uh, so I know, obviously, I'm older. I'm talking guys in the 60s. Like, these are retirement guys, all right? These guys are vets, old retired union guys. They'll be going out on dates. And women their age or dating age appropriate, say late 40s up to 60s, they're asking for money for help with rent. Like, ladies, look, if you can't make it on easy mode that you have your life set on with all the government aid, all the affirmative action, all the preferential hiring treatments, I mean, this, you know, admittedly, these are boomer women. And so it's like you you still don't uh, how many divorce settlements you got on your, you still don't have the money? Oh, and there's, there's, by the way, there's not going to be any sex. It's just, I really need help with rent. What do you mean? You, you're you a 63-year-old woman. You need help with rent? What are you, 19? <clears throat> Cash App is just the modern-day equivalent of that. It's just the modern-day equivalent. Oh, I mean, the, the the face is coming down. The 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 facade, the, we're peering behind the curtain. The internet's showing it to us all. It's just like, no, we're just not. Paracelsius Underack, 10 bucks. Working women are taking the high paying jobs that men would normally have. More men could support a stay at home wife if more women chose to be stay at home wife. Women are propagandized for years. Well, yeah, I mean, there's the. Now, <clears throat> I'm not 100% on board that argument because the more labor, that means there's more production. Like, if a woman works, that doesn't take away, that's not a zero sum game um, because she generates her own income. Therefore, demand for real goods and services go up. So it's not like you've now deprived a guy. But for the gals who like when it comes to affirmative action and you're going to purposely promote women over men. Oh, gee, I wonder what that's going to do for the percentage of men that could support a family. And another thing we haven't addressed here, just I mean, let us count the ways. But look, for girls who are interested, for especially you younger girls. I want a man to take care of me. Let's say you want that show. Well, don't show up at the doorstep with $100,000 of student loan debt for a job, for a degree that isn't going to get you a job. I mean, don't be a, don't write off the, look, already, and it's not wrong. If you want to be a traditional housewife, you are going to be a financial liability. And that's not bad because the agreement is you be cute. You take care of the house, you make the food, you raise the children, the guy go makes the money. So in a way, women do work. Uh, well, they certainly work raising a family, no doubt about that. So already you are going to be a financial liability, but that is understood. You're, you're going to be doing other things. You show up to the dating pool with $100,000 in debt for your communications degree or your international relations degree or your man-hating studies degree. No. <laughs> Okay, let's think about that. You show up with student loan debt, with most of you girls do have. But we even went all the way at the at the five percent of guys who were willing and able. Now we we not like well, here's a hundred thousand dollars of debt. Can you take care of it? Well, normally that would have gone to pay for a house and like a lot of kids. I guess that's not happening. I guess we get how many how many marriage children are postponed because everyone's paying off the student debt, and it's at least eighty percent of the time those degrees, both the men and the women, are worthless. Choice meet consequences. Patriarchy. <laughs> Gone fishing. Boo doo 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 doo. I ain't working anymore. 
Guardian Knight, 20 bucks. What you recommend now that guys with none fancy pickups, two door rangers on the radar, targets and hiding assets? What do you what you recommend <clears throat> now that guys with none of the fancy pickups are on the radar targets in hiding assets or money? I'm I'm confused with the question. Are guys with low range pickups on the rate? Okay. If I read this correctly, Guardian, you're saying that because the value of trucks have gone up so much, because instead of having tradespeople and union workers and welders, we have a bunch of people who majored in diversity and education, liberal arts grads, and they don't produce anything of value. <clears throat> There's a shortage of trucks. Therefore, any truck a guy owns means he's wealthy, and therefore women are hip to that jive. Is that what you're saying? I don't think women i'll be perfectly honest i don't think they are that uh acute or aware they they aren't um i mean even guys still are confused to think that if i show wealth not actually have wealth women don't have a discerning eye men don't have a discerning eye you associate fancy clothes with wealth i associate fancy fancy clothes with debt i, I associate fancy cars with poverty because that guy don't have no money I don't believe women are that couth or clever or observant. Average. I mean, you get a financial, you know, you get a gal as a CPA. Obviously, she'll know. Yes. <clears throat> but your rank and file girl with her liberal arts degree that has had so much bullshit shoved up her ass, she doesn't know blue from red or that there's a ball of light in the sky. She's not going to say, hey, wait a second. That car, he just said he can't put the miles on that car. I bet you that means he's got a lease. He, he doesn't really have it. And you know that that and he said he's a marketing executive. Well, I looked it up and he only makes 70,000. This guy's losing $2,000 a month. I don't think they have that auditing ability to truly discern and assess who has money and who don't. And let's let's also be very clear. Uh unfortunately young women are blinded like the 50 shades of gray. Oh, he's a helicopter pilot philanthropist executive. Do you know how many executives I knew? who kept coming back to our bank because they weren't making money and they needed an extension on their loan. They see CEO, they see the least sports car. They think that's money. They think that's wealth. Meanwhile, they, they'd be Snoresville with the rancher who owns 10,000 acres and uh, ranches, whatever, 5,000 head of cattle. Oh, he, he plays with poo. Yeah, guys. Got more money than God, but you don't like it. He lives out in Nebraska. <clears throat> oh, his truck is dirty. <laughs> I love these these economically worthless people. Like they're so. Oh, I can't. Like you don't even do anything. You literally do nothing of economic value for this society. And you're bitching and whining about the manure guy who owns like a $10 million manure company and keeps the world fed. And he's got millions of dollars. Well, he plays with manure. Gross. Well, yeah, but he's not going to take you on a date to the manure fields. I don't know. Maybe get to know the guy or something. <clears throat> Dr. Paradox, five bucks. We recently bought a condo in Wuxi. About an hour away from Neijing for more convenience purchase using cash reserve earnings. Enjoy that decline. Oh, you're over in China then. Okay, cool. Hey, Doc, can you email me some pictures over at Asshole Consulting? I appreciate it. Don't, you don't have to have pictures of yourselves. And I'd like to see, you know, oh, what does it look like over there? Like just a regular street. I'd like to see what a street looks like over there. Reen Schwartz or five bucks. Cappy, recent video of women fighting over a married guy in Vegas. Going to see more of that. You should look it up. Vegas, I think, ah, no, I mean, enough video cameras, enough people is my, this is going down. Sorry, by the way, my camera, hang on. There we go. It's been a hang on. My camera's falling down. These people keep butt dialing me. It's just, could you imagine a mistakeless world?
Could you imagine? The camera has epochs. It's supposed to stick on there. It doesn't stick on there. <clears throat> anyway, getting back to your point, Reen. Um, I, enough video cameras with enough population, you're going to see. It's going to pick up craziness. I don't think the hive. I, I really think you're underestimating just how much power uh, the commune of women, not communism, the commune, the hive of women, the hive, especially with a feminist operating system. If you leave the reservation, they're going to hate you. Like you really, <clears throat> I don't think how, how dare you pine after me? Really? They even got like a pick me. That's what they call them. A pick me. How dare you? I mean, it, it is. How dare you live your life for a man? Oh, I assume I'm living for a man. Okay, good. Then go live for yourself. Have fun with that. <laughs> Have fun with your miserable life. <laughs> but they're they're afraid, which I don't care because they keep telling me how strong and independent they are. Well, if you're strong and independent, you would be strong and independent to tell the hive to F off and this is what you want in life. But um, you're not, I, I don't believe this is the beginning of a, of a fad or like finally the dam will break and we have loved you this entire time nope they want to keep that dam up we can't let any water flow paracelsius under like ten dollars there's no wage gap there is no wage gap there's an earnings gap you nailed it men choose the more dangerous jobs and do overtime uh if you read myron's book uh he talks about women work uh fewer hours and they major in in easier subjects uh that have uh vastly more supply and less demand for those services it's it's fallen again it's fallen again oh god <laughs> it's scraping down again <laughs> hang on i'm sorry guys i this is my freaking life <clears throat> when companies did an internal audit the companies found that they were underpaying the men yep hang on Just gonna, it's just gonna keep doing this. It's just hang. Close your eyes, guys. You know what? I'm, I'm sorry. Let's, let's do it this way. I'll just, we'll let it slowly go down again, and then I'm just gonna kill the camera. And then I don't know. I'm gonna get some super glue or something. Uh, earnings gap. When companies did an internal audit, the companies found that they were underpaying the men. Yep, yep, it's true. Uh, AGB five bucks. Wonder what happens when enough men drop out. Or leave the states to find women who appreciate them. Well, what happens is GDP goes down. So what happens? It's no different than brain drain or um, capital flight. When an environment becomes bad for companies, they leave. And like, what happened to our employment? Um, yeah, that that's just what happened. And from a purely economic view, it's no different than war. War kills a bunch of men. Men become more valuable. Um. Uh, if men leave, then the men that remain will become more valuable. But as I've said and postulated before, many, but I don't think women like guys that much. Some do. Um, and even I hate to accuse the lady of this a poor gal that was crying. Do you even like the guy or is it just you don't want to work no more? It, yeah. I would, until you're treated better, then you'll be treated better, you know? A lesbian mustard bottle, 10 bucks. Your video t entitled Men Who Wear Other Men's Jerseys is truly a work of art. I live in Milwaukee and all your talking points resonate on a frighteningly high level thing. That's because people in Wisconsin are stupid. And I know that because I grew up there. AGB, five bucks again. If men can't have a woman or family, why work hard? <clears throat> I kind of feel sorry for women that most men need them to fuel their urge to do anything productive. Um, yeah, it's, well, the other thing, I think it was Molin who pointed out, men could get by on a fraction of the money that women can. You've seen those memes where it's like girls like, do men really live like this? And it's an egg cart with a TV on it and a rolled out <laughs> like cot. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, ladies. We could get by an impulse power. You're, you're going to see a shockingly low GDP um, when men have nothing to live for but themselves, because we can we can get by on a fraction. Dr. Paradox, five bucks. Sure thing in Hong Kong right now. Wuxi reek after next. We'll take some good shots for you, but thanks. I appreciate that, Doc. And Donna Hannaford, our Australian agent in the field, for just two generous Australian dollars, she stops in and says, hi, good to see you, Donna. All right, that's it. <clears throat> so the link's below. All right, now, now the thing's doing, now it's holding still. No, that's the wrong way. Oh, things only work the way they were supposed to. 
Uh, so link below are all those resources. Gentlemen and ladies, I recommend you get the menu Life Without the Opposite Sex because I, they say 50. I'm, dude, I'm going to see it in my lifetime where it's 75. Most of you young people aren't going to be getting married. Most of the girls don't want to get married. Most of the girls don't want guys. I get, we get it. We get it. <clears throat> there you go. Most of the guys can't support you now anyway. So you all better get used to a life by yourself. There's also Bachelor Pad Economics, Financial Bike Bible for Men and Women Brave Enough to Read It. There's my course, Achieving Financial Excellence. That'll give you the swift kick in the ass you need to go and start embarking on things like Bachelor Pad Economics, setting up an IRA, why you should do it. You're like, oh, I better get to this. <sighs> Worthless. It's a great book for young people so they don't go to school and ruin their lives for a stupid degree. And that's about it. Oh, we got one more, I think. Hat and Clocks. Ah, at the last minute. Good old Hat and Clocks. Two bucks. Cappy, women want to work. They want it. Yes, they, <clears throat> they wanted to work in things they wanted to work at. Every once in a while, that's a legit field like engineering or accounting. There are, no doubt, women engineers and accountants and surgeons. Most of them wanted to, most of them wanted to be mothers to other children. That's basically what it boils down to. Elementary school teacher, ch early childhood education, child therapist. It's like, why don't you just raise your damn kids? Why? Why? All right. That's it. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.